Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, regardless of where you are in the world, it is evening here in the Delaware Valley. My name is Irv Homer, and we're broadcasting from IrvHomer.com. And of course, the big thing tonight is whether or not the Phillies will wind up the World Series tonight, and all hell will probably break loose. But one of the most important things that we're dealing with on the Irv Homer Show on a continuing basis until this economic crisis is over is the question of credit. What is credit? Is it a friend? Is it a foe? I think someone once said fire can be your best friend or your worst enemy and credit can be your best friend or your worst enemy and we want to continue our ongoing series of what to do if you're involved in credit fraud, if you're overextended, how to protect yourself, the violations of the law that credit cards commit that you're not aware of and the matters you get away with it. Credit is an unknown entity under the so-called capitalist system that we have in America. And we're pleased in just a moment to introduce our special guest who will be making a regular appearance on the Irv Homer Show to help many of you folks who have sent us in questions on our email and email to Pearl Poulter, our guest, and to me on our chat room. And if you have any questions about credit or your particular situation, you can get on our chat room right now. Just link over to IrvHomer.com and link over to the chat room and your questions will be answered. Please make them as clear and definitive as possible so that we can give you an accurate interpretation of the problem that you have. Credit, credit problems and, and, and identity theft, a big thing that's going on in America today. And probably even even well. Let me introduce Pearl Paul to our special guest. Pearl, good to see you again. I want to thank you for having me back on again. Uh, it's your program. Uh, one of the things that we'd like to get into tonight, among other things, is how do you teach your child what credit is, and how to prevent getting involved in this credit mess, rather than after the fact and saying, "Oh my God, look what happened." So it is important, folks. We may have a primer tonight. And Pearl has graciously accepted to explain to you how to explain credit to your child and explain it to yourself. Many of you don't have any idea. The other thing is that family members also live beyond their means and then there's suicide and there's murder and there's everything in light of the fact that we have gambling uh, going on in uh, Pennsylvania now. If you saw yesterday's Inquirer, the Sunday edition of the Philadelphia Inquirer, Everything that we had discussed on the Earth Homer show back to the days of WWDB with the dangers of gambling. Finally, the Philadelphia Inquirer decided to make a front page story out of it now that the casinos are already here. Had they paid attention to the Earth Homer show and Bill Kearney, who we've had a guest for many, many times on the Earth Homer show, those folks wouldn't have been in a difficulty they're in. And we know as everything else, it ain't never going to happen to you because you're smart, eh? We all know how to gamble. B, we all know how to use credit. And C, eh, we really don't know. This is broadcast from IrvHomer.com. Once again, my website with a lot of information is IrvHomer.com. And you can email me or email Pearl Poulter, who will give you her address and the books that she's written and the help that is available to you simply by contacting Pearl and relieve that, the, that problem. A lot of folks are under stress because you start getting those threatening letters from the credit card companies and from the collection agencies and all that kind of good stuff. Once again, you can get on the chat room and ask your questions. We'll take your questions as soon as they come in. So we'll get on with the program. And Pearl, once again, welcome to the Euro Homer Show. And that great service that you do to many, many people. You've made it your career over the years that I've known you to help people. Of course, Pearl makes a living out of this, but it is a service that you can get, before we go any further, uh, Pearl, there was a expose on Thick on Television that I saw this past week about some of these fraudulent credit card companies mm -hmm. that are popping up mm -hmm. on how to help you, and, and it, it's like these ex-IRS agents mm -hmm. who were here to help you, and they say $350 a flat fee, and then they nickel and dime you to death once you sign yes. up. So if you don't trust an IRS agent when they work for the IRS, let me tell you, don't trust them after they leave the IRS and go in the private business. So, Pearl, before we ever, what's the danger of some of these credit, are they licensed, are they professionals? You know, let me, this is so important, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, and many out there, if you have a credit problem, and you know, no one is exempt from credit, so I hear it every day when somebody says to me, you know, I always had good credit. 
the problem that Irv is talking about is right now everybody is coming out of the woodwork if you have a credit problem and even today I received a phone call it said I paid thirty thousand dollars to the creditors I think I think I I mean I'm, I have good credit now wrong he had thirty thousand dollars in bad credit he paid to the bill collectors the wrong people if you have a credit problem there's I have a whole list one where not to go you don't go to a credit repair company. A credit repair company will charge you thousands and thousands of dollars. Some of them do not know credit laws. They don't know where to start. And they'll say to you, pay us $300, $100, and you think it's so cheap, you think it's great. Well, first of all, if somebody is helping you with your credit, it doesn't cost $100. It's a lot of paperwork, and you know it's legal going back and forth to the credit bureaus, disputing with the credit bureaus. It costs money, but not thousands of dollars. That's one. And, and make sure you do their homework. Years ago, I'm the one that went up to Harrisburg in the Pennsylvania area in the United States to put credit repair companies out of business because the majority of them did not know credit laws. Not saying credit repair was a bad business. It was a good business because what it did was it was disputing your mistakes what the credit bureau was doing to you to stop you from getting that mortgage and everything else so if you're looking for a credit repair do your homework make sure get a list get a list like I don't advertise I go by referrals only for the last 25 years and I'm not a credit repair I'm against it next number two on the list now when credit repair companies there was laws out there what did they do they went back into the woodwork and came out of the woodwork as council services now we all know if you do your homework and you look up council services it's free to the people but is it really to your advantage you've seen on the news in the Delaware County in the Philadelphia area where council services were pocketing your money and as you were paying they were paying their creditors they weren't they were pocketing your money and then you had bad credit on top of it besides paying them so you when I say do your homework sometimes council services just came out of the woodwork and a lot of these credit repair companies came back into the woodwork under nonprofit council services so you have to beware and you have to do your homework the next down the list is attorneys now attorneys only know bankruptcy laws and I know I'm a paralegal now, and the only reason I, why I became a paralegal, I wanted to know what the attorneys knew about credit laws. Nothing. They just knew about bankruptcy laws. So how can they correct your credit if they only know bankruptcy laws and not credit laws? And it is so important. If you're back on your mortgage, yes, you file bankruptcy. You do not file bankruptcy if you have all credit card debt, I don't care if it's a hundred thousand or a million dollars, you do not file bankruptcy if you do not own property. Property is only there to protect your property. So if you went to an attorney's office and said, I'm getting harassed by a bill collector. I don't know what to do. The attorney is going to say to you, file bankruptcy, we'll get them all off your back. That's great, except you have bad credit from seven to 10 years and this is what you don't want. And the reason for this is, you don't know your credit rights, but the attorney didn't know your credit rights to tell you. So you can do a lot of things yourself just by education. I've been doing this for 25 years and I always say no one is exempt from credit laws. No one is exempt from having a credit problem. If you think, if you really think that all of a sudden you're in the limelight because people are harassing you, you can't pay your bills, you're overextended, there's help out there you're in the better light than the creditors are because the banks are going to be going under before you do and if you go under it's your own fault because you didn't do your homework yes Irv's right I do charge a fee I do provide the service I also provide a book and six CDs if you can't afford my service I do not take on as I say the whole world on his clients because there's too many I can't take I cannot take the whole world on his clients and I'm looking at a letter here that Irv will send there let the audience know all during the program, Pearl, A, where they can get in touch with you, information about you personally, because I trust Pearl. I've known her for 30 years, and I know that she's legitimate, and I know that she's not a fraud and fake or phony like these other guys. So tell the audience where All right, let can. me tell you about me first. Those who are not familiar with me, I'm a consumer advocate for credit rights. I'm an author of not just one book, Credit Lifeline, but I'm an author of 
five books on credit. My first book was entitled In America is Bad Credit, a Prison Term. That's when the first show I ever appeared with Eric Homer. Second one was We the People Have Credit Rights Too, Pearl Polto's Easy Guide to Good Credit. When I was doing credit, when I was I was an insurance agent. That's how I started. I was an insurance agent going from household to household. Somebody in a household had a credit problem trying to get a mortgage, was going through a divorce, and they said, Pearl, can you help me out? Well, naturally, because I was in their household, I tried to help them out. And as I tried to help them out with their credit, there's things that I did not understand. There's things that I thought was wrong. And I did more homework and investigated it. Well, I did help the person with their credit problems, and that was 25 years ago, and it snowballed. But back then, when I did my homework, I did not like what I seen. I did not like on a credit report an example where it says, date closed. We all know the seven-year statute on a credit report. Well, I didn't like it because it said date closed slash verify, which means the creditor could have verified your account any time during those seven years and three years later, they could have put it on for seven more years and seven more years. But no one out there in the entire country, in the entire world, knew about credit. I was ahead of my time. So I wrote my first book in America's Bad Credit on Prison Term. And back then, I became a paralegal. I became a paralegal because I wanted to know everything there was to know about credit, and I couldn't. This is why I learned about attorneys knowing credit laws, just bankruptcy laws. So I had to go through another resource. I had to go through Congress. At the same time, in 1989, I was the first person to sue a credit bureau. And I had to pro se it. Pro se it means I had to be my own attorney because no attorney knew about credit law. So I had a jury trial demand it. And this is where I got enough education as well. I actually seen what the credit bureaus were all about. So through the years and through the, the study that I did, I learned to actually know what the credit bureaus were, what their meaning was. Uh, I know everything there is to know about credit more than anybody in the entire United States. I like to challenge anybody because I've been in a courtroom, I've been through school, learning through Congress what they can and what they cannot do. I know every law that's out there when it comes to the credit laws. So all this knowledge, I decided to turn it around. I do seminars for the people. And if you have a question, I'm around the clock, 24 hours around the clock, in my 1-800-876-CREDIT. 1-800-876-CREDIT. You can call me up with questions or you become a client. Then I decided, I wrote a book, Credit Lifeline, and I decided, you know what? What would I want done if I was a consumer? What would I want done in a book? What would I want done in a CD for you to understand in pure English? Because an insurance agent, an example, or an attorney can sit down with you and you would say, I don't know what she's talking about. They're all in pure legal terms. My book, Credit Lifeline, is all in pure English. And I decided what I would want is letters to copy, just copy to the creditors, the bill collectors, the FTC, whatever it was. And that's how I put my book together and my six CDs. But the problem today we're having, especially today, is we have a credit crunch. And the average person is scared, petrified. And this scares me because all my hard work for 25 years in helping you, now you're scared. Now you're actually to the point by saying, I think I'm going to pay these bill collectors because I'm petrified if they're going to be knocking on my door. And that's the biggest fear that I hear with people. I do not want them to knock on my door, embarrassed in front of my neighbors, call me up on a cell phone, call my relatives up, all this is illegal. All this is illegal. And I could give you your rights back. You can have a free, a free lawsuit as of years ago. The new law is if a bill collector harasses you illegally by threatening you, by calling up your neighbors, your relatives, you have a free lawsuit case against them. And all you have to do, many attorneys aren't familiar with this, call my toll-free number, one 800 876 credit. We deal with an association attorney. That's all he does is sue bill collectors from here to other countries. But the problem is you have to be aware of your rights. We have a credit problem. I, I said years ago, there are solutions. We can correct it. I'll never get rich with this, but I can get rich in educating you so you won't have to lose your home. If you are losing your home and you're in foreclosure, call me. I could save your home for you as well. It's not that I'm a miracle worker. But what happens is 
I just use all the laws that are out there under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. But if you look under your computer under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, it may be foreign language to you. So it's being interpreted to you in pure English. Some of my clients are the rich and famous. Some of my clients are even Congress people that made these laws. And the majority of my clients are even attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys. I made deals with them by saying when your client comes to your office, tell them not to file bankruptcy. They're accountings, they're lawyers, they're doctors. I do seminars for all these people. But it's up to you, the everyday person. I'm only one person, but I can help you. But I always say I can take it to the water, I can't force you to drink it. It's up to you to do your homework. And do your homework on me, too. Go to pearlpolto.com or creditlifeline.com. Do your homework on me as well before you do anything. And I can guarantee you, I only will serve you and, and you'll refer somebody else. And then it just goes on for 25 more years. But the key is, it's not me helping you. It's the worst I've ever seen in creation when it comes to credit problems today. And from 1989, it was nothing. Today, it's pretty bad. And once again, that's Pearl Polto, P-O-L-T-O dot com. Let's go to the chat room and take a call from Aaron. Aaron says, ladies and gentlemen, I had family members that lived in my house that had a different phone number, and the credit card company called them instead of me. I did not give them the phone number, and their number was an unlisted number. So apparently, Pearl... They phoned the, the credit card company. It may not have been the credit card company. It may have been a collection agency, so we really don't know, Aaron. But we'll assume it was the credit card company. And they're harassing Aaron. It's his home. But the people who had the bad credit or whatever the problem was had an unlisted number, so they got his number, and they're harassing him? Well, let me, let me put something to rest. It's not the credit card company doing this. Credit card companies do not harass. You have to remember, if you owe a credit card company, they can easily charge off the account, take it as a tax write-off, and they get paid. So they, they're not in the business of harassing you. Who's in the business of harassing you is the bill collector that the credit bureau... See, the creditor wants to get paid, but he can't get paid by you, but he's not going to harass you. So he goes to his accounting, his accounting charges it off as a tax and write-off, and then he hires the bill collector, or he pays the bill collector, or the bill collector pays for your bill. Now this bill collector will do anything, anything, to collect money from you. Now, here's the good news. When you say he called up your relatives or an, a number unlisted, this is a violation. He's not allowed to call, a, let's say, your relatives or your mother or your father or your cousin or your brother to say, hey, this person has a credit card debt and I'm trying to get through to him. Because then you can document it, you can record it, and then you call my toll-free number, 1-800-876-CREDIT. Send me the tape, send me the documentation, and I will gladly refer this to our consumer protection attorney. You will have a free lawsuit case, and th this will never happen again. And as you say, can I prove it? As long as there's someone in the house that can document that you can receive this call to somebody else with an unlisted number, then it could happen. It could happen. You can make it work. Please, don't sit back and stay stagnant. There's only 6,000 bill collectors in our country. But there's going to be 20,000 if people like you will pay the bill collectors. And I'm trying to put them out of business and, and have everybody not pay them. And if you're in a state that is exempt, they can't touch you. There's a state law, there's a federal law, that's a different thing. But calling in an unlisted number, that's a violation of the Fair Credit. There's the Fair Debt Collection Act. That's a violation of it. Now, let me ex expand this a little bit more, uh, 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 Pearl. I own a credit card a company, okay? And I have client A owes me 30 grand. I contact a collection agency and I said, I will sell you that debt uh, on uh, 90 cents on the dollar. Okay. I buy that debt from, they buy the debt from me. Right. So I'm willing to take a 10 cent on a dollar hit. Okay. But at least I got my money. Right. The credit card company or the collection agency now owns that debt. Correct. They sold a little bit. They then go after the credit card company's client. Correct. How much power do they have more so than the credit card company as far as collection? Good question. And it's a good question to everybody out there that's listening. You 
When you signed with a credit card company, you signed the agreement. It's called a contract. You signed the agreement. You did not sign any agreement with a third party bill collector. And so you to understand it, you owe me ten thousand dollars. You can't afford to pay me. And I want the I want the ten thousand dollars. So I go to my accounting and I say to my accounting, you cannot afford to pay me ten thousand. My accounting says we're going to take this as a write off. Well, I go to my neighbor, Irv, and I say to her, You want this debt? It's up to you. And he says, Of course I do. I'll give you so much on a dollar. And he takes it. Now he starts harassing you unbelievable, even illegally, he starts harassing you. But I'm happy, and you're so scared of Irv harassing you, you pay him. You pay him anything, but you pay him. I'm happy. I just got a charge off, I just got a tax deduction. Irv is happy as my collector because he got, let's say, $1,000 out of you. The only one that's not happy is you. And then, let's suppose you go for a car or a mortgage, and you pull a copy of your credit report, and it says you owe Pearl Polto $10,000, and you're saying, but I paid $1,000. Wrong. You paid my bill collector, or it doesn't even have to be my bill collector. You paid the wrong person. So this is why on a credit report, it's going to say, that you still owe me ten thousand dollars so a person would say Pearl you know you're helping me with my credit can I send you I have a judgment of twenty thousand and I paid them can I actually mail you the satisfaction letter this is all well and good you paid them except for one problem I don't want the satisfaction letter you don't want the satisfaction letter to send to the credit bureau because if you do all you're doing is using another law under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. You're using the law that the credit bureau is saying, thank you, you just did our homework for us. We're going to keep it on for 10 years. This is education, though. No one's going to knock on your door to give you this education. So, again, I'm going to repeat. I could take it to the water. I can't force you to drink it. But the thing is, it's up to you to get all the knowledge, all the education when it comes to your credit cards and overextend it and charge-offs and bill collectors you can have your cake and eat it too, just absorb the education and then know how to use it. Even if you have to hire somebody, know how to use it. Now in Philadelphia, I don't know, uh, but there was a, a case where the city of Philadelphia sold its debt to a guy mm -hmm. who I had the misfortune or good fortune to know and meet socially. He went to jail. He was using City stationery. Okay. Trying to collect. Trying to collect. Okay. When the debt was owed to the city, and the city sold the debt to him. Amazing. That's called a bill collector. And he went to jail. Well, yeah, well, he would go to jail, but obviously, because he's, he's like mingling funds. But he's back in business again doing something I don't know what. New York, ladies and gentlemen, of the five counties under the Koch administration, sold their traffic tickets after a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to private companies mm -hmm. if they were politically connected. And when you got a notice from the bill collector from one of these five counties if you mm -hmm. had a delinquent traffic ticket, they didn't even know what the debt was for because I, I had contacted them from one of my listeners. They said, we don't know, but we've got a debt. Do you owe some time for something? Well, I don't know. Well, we bought the debt from the city and you owe the city uh, 200 and some dollars for a violation and we bought the debt and you better pay us. And the guy's car, A, wasn't in New York. It was the wrong color car and the wrong make of automobile. So my question is, does the government or any government agencies sell debt to these bill collectors? The people really made a deal with the city to pay their taxes. They didn't make a deal with some bill collector. The city. Or states. Or, or the state yes has connections of bill collectors uh if you have received like a traffic ticket in your hometown especially philadelphia or a local then what happens is they sell it to a collection company and it's the collection company now let's suppose you just went to let's say the city of philadelphia you went down the city of philadelphia and you actually paid it well just because you paid it doesn't say it's not going to appear on your credit report because it is because the bill collector still after you so you may have it down three times on your credit report and this is pretty sad because there's one traffic ticket that you paid but you owe again on your credit report and you're really angry because now you have to prove to someone else the car company the mortgage company that you paid it so keep all your files 
and this is what he's talking about when it comes to any kind of fraud out there or anybody that uses and now the Christmas holidays are coming up especially talk about identity theft but if you have a traffic ticket if you have anything with the state put it in writing save it don't send it to the credit bureau save it put a file save it and then dispute it with the credit bureau to say investigate this investigate this let it be the credit bureau doing their homework that they're getting paid for into investigating this and if the city or the state does not respond back to that credit bureau the law states it has to be deleted or removed even though you're sitting home with the payment in full you have to understand from here to anywhere it's the same law it's federal law under the fair credit reporting act now there are time pearl polter is our special guest ladies and gentlemen if you have a credit problem i suggest you call 1-800-876-CREDIT get in touch with pearl yes there is a fee but i guarantee your results are going to be well worth the fee she's been doing this for over 25 years and i've known her for longer than that we're talking about credit card fraud we're talking about how bad your credit is things that are pulled on you and me that we're not aware of now one of the things that i found interesting and it happened to me when a gentleman called me one night and he was hysterical and screaming and everything else he had paid a debt he had borrowed twenty five thousand dollars and no i had borrowed twenty five thousand dollars i'm sorry to buy a business and they entered a note of, of debt with the prothonotary's office okay. in the city of philadelphia which was legal right. okay, i owed the debt they ended it. i paid the debt off okay unbeknownst to me they never put the lien or the judgment against my property they put it against this guy's property because his last name was h-o-n-e-r instead of h-o-m-e-r and so i contacted my attorney i said this poor guy's having a coronary because he's got this debt the debt's been paid off he said well they should have removed it from the prothonotary's office how important is it for you after you pay your debt legitimately say to a finance company or mortgage company to make sure that that judgment is removed because the debt has been paid so that if the credit card company does check that's been paid well the first mistake Whose responsibility uh, is it, it, it believe it or not it's your responsibility the first mistake that i seen you make is right. contacting your attorney right because if you contact an attorney you have to pay a fee and they have to straighten it out where you could have done this again you have the right to do this yourself all you had to do was have them stamp paid in full and then you pull a copy of your credit report do you know that one out of a hundred people don't even know what's on their credit report yeah but see the old the old guy had the judgment against i could have set up your nose it wasn't against my property well no there. it wasn't against yours but eventually in the long run he would have done some homework and then it could have backfired on you so whoever paid the debt you should have pulled up your credit report and then you have this in front of you that it was paid in full yes you did him a favor because if he ever had applied for a mortgage which he did that's why and, he contacted me well it was yes hysterical. well and guess what the mortgage company would say it's not up to us it's you have to prove it it's not up to us but he's saying but it's not mine well you prove it you're gonna have to pay this debt so here's a poor innocent victim yeah. that would have had to pay for something that he didn't know I that he it. didn't know now the good news is he would have had it done all this homework to prove it but then he would have had a lawsuit case against the mortgage company for not looking into it further but now you only gave one situation this happens 100,000 times yeah. around the country That's why I wanted to warn our viewers I mean if, if you pull a copy of your credit report this happens over and over again just because you pay a debt doesn't say that it's off your report and then there's going to be mistakes on your credit report that people has to look into again it's holiday season everybody is fair game to looking inside your credit report and they do they have different methods they have your your grandparents that died they can have your pull up credit cards they can put applications with debts i mean really do everything during the holidays you have to learn and, and understand your credit rights and it's not just one it's everybody in the whole united states as i said from being a credit expert for 25 years i have never never seen it this bad in our country and i've seen now they're going after people with good credit if you have good credit and this has happened to you i would like to hear about it now they're giving you credit let's suppose they gave you a credit line of twenty-five thousand and you're spending it and you have excellent credit and then down the road six months down the road they say to you they write you a letter and say 
we just decreased you to 20000 Well, you already owe 24000 Now they're sending you a bill for 4000 Well, you can't pay the 4000 and you're telling them, what are you doing? You just decreased it. I had 25000 and I'm not even above my credit limit. But the banks feel, hey, we have the right to do what we want to do. This has to be addressed in Congress. This has to be addressed to people like you with good credit. It's not just people with bad credit. They're going after people with bi with good credit now, and it's pretty sad. Well, what happens then if you have a twenty-five thousand dollar line of credit? You're up to twenty-four thousand. They reduce your line of credit to twenty thousand. You're four thousand dollars over, unbeknownst to you and all innocents. Can they go after you for that four thousand dollars? Yes, they can. And they have, and they're doing it, the people with good credit. This is Even what I'm saying. Even though you entered into a contract where it was $25,000, where the hell did they get that kind? Congress is asleep with the switch? Yes, what? they are. The Congress is asleep, but you said a key word. You signed a contract with the 25000 mm. You signed the contract, but they're still, go it's like the bill collectors harassing you, and it's illegal. Well, the credit cards or companies are getting away with this. I'm not sure it's because of this election or what's going on. But they're getting away with this right now. They're getting away with it. They won't get away with it, I'm hoping, next year. But right now, people with good credit are having credit problems and don't know where to do. They're overextended, not because of their own pocketbook. Well, because they reduced their credit They line. reduced their credit line in the midst of it all. And it's not even in a contract. Do they have the right, sorry to say, because of this administration, yes, they have the right. They have the right to go into your credit report to say, hey, we don't like it because you're paying all these other bills and we feel you're not going to pay us eventually, so we're going to close you up or decrease you because we feel like it. We have a chat room here if you have any questions for Pearl, Pearl Polto, ladies and gentlemen, at P-O-L-T-O, -O, and you can get in touch with Pearl at 1-800-876-CREDIT or go to pearlpolto.com. One of the things I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you receive in the mail as I do you have been pre-approved for $25,000 and there's an application form in there for you to fill out, which is a bunch of garbage because they haven't pre-approved you. That's a bunch of nonsense. When you fill out that, re that, that, that uh, form that they send you, then they investigate you to find out whether or not. However, what I resent, Pearl, is the fact that even the credit, and I only have one credit card, they send me these blank checks to sucker you into going into debt. Now, those checks... A check, in my opinion, is my personal cash. If somebody steals that check from my mailbox, or if people get disgusted, I don't want those damn things, they throw it away without tearing it up. What can be done about these credit card companies that mail you these blank checks and say, pay off your debt, go on vacation, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. You know, at the beginning, Earth talked about the casino. And this is what these blank checks are like. It's like a casino chip that's giving you money, but it's not money. First of all, this is the worst thing that, to identity theft if it went to a neighbor's house. That's one. Or if, it went, if these checks got into the wrong hand, what can you do about it? You can contact, even if you didn't ever receive a check, you can contact the credit card company, ask for a supervisor, if possible and say to the supervisor, do not mail me any checks to go with this credit card. Now, they will notate this on their computer. So this way, if just in case somebody fraudulently signed those checks and they mailed it out, it's on their computer. Now, I would normally and strongly suggest that when you do this and call the credit card company, you put it in writing to them as per my conversation with you and get their name that do not, I do not authorize for you, your credit card company, to send me any checks because you're putting it in writing, you're putting it the date, so this way if anybody cashes those checks, you are not, you're not responsible anyway, but you're responsible for so much of it. This way, you're not responsible of it. As far as the pre-approved, many people out there will say they're, they're angry because they're getting all this pre-approved, they didn't order anything, they didn't order a credit card, they didn't approve for this credit card. Pre-approved credit card does not mean you are approved. What it means is I want your authorization to fill this out for me to look inside your credit report. And then you wonder why your score goes down. Your score goes down because you just filled out a pre-approved credit application. Mm -hmm. And now you're giving them the right to look inside your credit report and pulling up your report, which is another score that's lowered. 
And then they're sending you a letter back by saying, we're turning you down. And you're saying, I didn't even apply for this and I'm getting turned down. Well, not only you lost once, you lost twice. You lost out because you knew you had a credit problem. You knew you were going to get turned down. And secondly, you lowered your score. So if everybody out there that says, why is my score so low, you could be creating your own nightmare with lowering your score. When you get a pre-approved credit card, throw it out. It's all just telemarketed. Now, how do they get it? The credit bureaus. The credit bureaus are paying. The credit bureaus, some of the credit bureaus have just recently gotten sued because of this telemarketing and all these pre-approved things going out. They're buying the list. So just because you get a credit card, if you have, let's say, an application in the mail, if it says on there, social security number, date of birth, then you know they didn't approve you. They, they want to pull up your credit to see if you're approved. And then they'll either send you the card or deny you. And if you have a credit problem that you think you have a credit problem, if, I always have an old saying with my clients, if you think you have a credit problem, you do. If you think you have good credit, pull up your report to find out. But if you think you have a credit problem, normally you do. And if you can't remember how many years ago, you still have a credit problem. Get your credit corrected in today's economy with the high interest rates. I mean, I'm appalled by the fact, the calls I get in my office by saying, well, I just applied for a car. They're charging me 27% interest. Do I have a credit problem? Well, I mean, there's your answer. 27% interest. Do I have a credit problem? Of course you have a credit problem. What can she do? Correct the credit, then purchase the car. The people are desperate today. And, and Irv said at the beginning with these casinos, you know, sometimes when you go into a casino, everybody's like with that American dream. They want to buy everything. They want to win. But the casinos will win at all times. And you're the one that's going to go in debt first before the casinos go in debt. So don't spend your mortgage or your rent money or your electric. If you can't afford it, you shouldn't be there. And, and, and I know this is happening to everybody out there. I do understand. If everybody says to me, well, I don't have a credit problem, now I do. I understand. It's suicide month, the month of December when it comes to credit. People all over will try to commit suicide because they cannot afford and they don't want to put this pressure on their family. But you know what? My answer is during the holidays, if you're going to kill yourself, no bill collector is going to come to your funeral. No bill collector. So you didn't, you didn't, your means, correct the problem, learn what you can do, and I will tell you, you can reverse it. If you're having a credit problem, please call me. 1-800-876-CREDIT. C-R-E-D. And it's not an advertisement. This is really from the heart. We're trying to help you with your credit problem to get over this credit crunch. I just thought in my sick mind, Pearl Palto, and we have uh, room for your question on the chat board. Uh, now, I have a $25,000 line of credit, say, and I get a notice that they've reduced my limit to $20,000. Mm -hmm. And they send me three checks, okay? Suppose I write out a check for $50,000 and I find somebody willing to accept it. Mm -hmm. Is that fraud on my behalf, on my part? No. No. No, because they send you the letter after the fact and you, you, you wrote the checks out. No, that's happening every day. Well, let's assume I have the right, and they didn't send me any notes. I got a credit line for 25000 okay? And I write a check. Okay, you guys want to send me a, a blank check? I'll fill the damn thing out. <laughs> I fill it out for fifty grand. All right, fifty grand. okay. And they gave you a check for $25,000. I fill it out for fifty grand. I deposit my bank. My bank gives me $50,000. Well, they can come after you for fraud if you did not pay one of the payments. If you didn't pay one of the payments, right, they would so, think so you did it on assume, purpose. So let's assume... I have a twenty-five thousand dollar grant. You send me a blank check. There's nothing on the check that says that you only could you only have a six thousand dollars left on your on your line. They send me a blank check. Yeah, but they're sending you a check. But your credit bill says credit line, credit limit, and use of available money in the check. It'll actually say this on your bill. So if it's if they send you, well, in I'm other words, stupid. I can't read. It. I filled the damn thing out for fifty grand. Now another thing, and I know that's now. If you said if you filled it out for fifty grand, here's what's going to happen: when you get your next bill, it's going to say that you owe the minimum payment is twenty five thousand. That's what it's going to say. And I tell them to stick it in your ear. Go well, yes, it. you can. If you were from a, a different exempt state, if you could have and didn't understand it, yes, you would win. They would lose. Now, one of the things that I I, I find that that bothers me is the credit lines that casinos extend to people. Mm -hmm. 
for 30 days. They're in the lending business mm -hmm. with no interest, mm -hmm. no collateral. They don't even check your credit line. Uh, they do some checking. They do some checking. But they do it very, very lightly. Very lightly, but they How also... How do the casinos get away with loaning you money, no interest for 30 days, okay. and then you have to straighten out after 30 days? Well... Where, they, where did they get the exemption to become a, a credit card company? They do have bill collectors. I, I know that for a There's fact. There's only one law firm in Philadelphia that used to do it. Well, it's in Jersey. It's right. in it's in Vegas. They do have bill collectors. Not attorneys, but bill collectors. And the reason for that is I have a client. Uh, there's a privacy act. There's, you know, everything's a privacy act when it comes to credit. But this one client, it looked like she went from casino to casino. And she took out $5,000 right. from at least six casinos. Now, when I pulled a copy of her credit report, there was judgments for 5000 of each casino. Now, what happened to her, what could happen to her? Nothing. What's going to happen is the reason why the judgments were there, it's called a default judgment. Default judgment means the creditor, which is the casino, wants to write off this account as a tax write-off. The only way they can do it is to go into a bill collector, put a judgment so they can write it off, and that's the bottom line. Did she ever pay all of them? She never paid a penny out of any of them. She had no intentions to. And she never signed any contracts with them to do it as well. So there, there's such a thing as judgment proof. And there's such a thing as, and the creditors know this, this is why many of the banks go under. But many of the people are scared they shouldn't be. We have more rights than they do. Just like this person with the casino. 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. Not to say that anybody should do it out there. Because the bottom line is, like just like her, she was petrified. But... To this day, and this was like six years ago, she still hasn't paid anything off. It's all removed, and 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 it's 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 removed to the point where she never paid any of them back. But who's the responsibility on? I'd say the casino. They should have done their homework on her, pulled a copy of her credit report, which I'm sure they didn't. But I'm sure they did some homework that she was gambling enough there. In light of the fact that most people are credit is based on credit card debt or mortgages. Right, exactly. Or, or, automobile, car, or, automobile, or automobile. automobile loans. Okay. What other areas do our does our audience have to be careful of that could affect their credit? Everything. Everything. When I say everything, insurance, rental. Uh, you mean insurance premiums? Ins no. If you apply for insurance. Oh, okay. If you apply for insurance, and the reason for that is I'm an insurance agent as well, but if you apply for insurance, you could be doing something as a scam. Or you could be uh, saying, well, I want $100,000 of insurance or I want insurance on my uh, home just to create a scam. So we need to know. Matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up because, and this is the first time I'm saying this even, even uh, publicly, I wanted to do a show on creditors pulling up. In other words, if you have a senior citizen and uh, somebody's coming in your home to take care of, of your person, they pull up a criminal record. Let's say your mother's here, or your, your sister's here, or your wife is here, and you hire somebody to come in to take care of them. A well, a caretaker, mm -hmm. and you're, you're assuming that the company is doing or did their homework. The only way they're doing their homework is a criminal check. They should be doing a credit check, and here's why. I have caught someone where, and I've contacted the, the caretaker company and saying, what you did was the person got caught and they asked me to correct their credit and there's a privacy act but the, the buck stops here because when I pulled up their credit she had eight judgments on her which all the families were suing her so they did a criminal check which she came up clean right. but the credit check she was stealing from the households so if you have as a caretaker you emphasize on your company you say pull credit report up on her not a, not a, a criminal report Pull up a credit report. You'll learn more about that person that's helping your mother, your father, whoever, or a senior citizen, more so than that. Let's go to Mark from Delaware, Pearl. Mark from Delaware. Why do I keep getting applications for credit cards? I filed bankruptcy years three years ago. Well, you're going to continue to get them, and here's why. Yes, bankruptcy has to stay on your credit report for seven to ten years. It's a must. Bankruptcy is the only thing. Everything else could be deleted. Judgments, foreclosures, repossessions. Bankruptcy cannot be removed from a credit report. Now, here's what the banks and the creditors are thinking. You filed bankruptcy, 
and you're wiped clean. So you cannot file bankruptcy again for six more years. So they think they got you. So they're going to gl gladly give you money now. If they give you money, well now you owe their bank and you can't file bankruptcy again. You can't default again. So that's some of the banks. How they think. This is why you're getting bombarded. They got a whole list of all the people that filed bankruptcy and they say, and I've heard this from the banks, they say, well I'm going to give this guy a chance because he can't default again. If he defaults again, he can't file bankruptcy again. Here's the, the news that you should have had. You shouldn't even have filed bankruptcy if you don't own property. And if you filed bankruptcy just because of credit cards, you didn't have to. You could have sued the bill collectors, got money in your pocket, and cleaned up your credit. So the bad news is you have bankruptcy on your report for 7 to 10 years. It can be. Everything under the bankruptcy that you, that you filed can be disputed and, and deleted. And the, why, the reason why I'm stressing this is because you do not want your next creditor to pull up your credit report and see everything under the bankruptcy. They, they're they going to see that word bankruptcy, but they won't see everything under the bankruptcy. And that's what you want. So yes, you're going to continue to get credit cards. They're just soliciting you from the people in the banks to say, let's give them a chance. Tear it up, throw it out, and, and don't do not do it again. Because you I think you learned your lesson the first time, especially if you don't own property. And this is pretty sad for people out there. Pearl Polta was our special guest. You can contact Pearl if you have a credit problem at 1-800-876. It's a toll-free number credit. That's 1-800-876-CRED. Or you can go to Pearl's website at pearlpolto.com. Now, Pearl, let's assume that you have a mortgage on a piece of real estate and um, you get in trouble. And so you prioritize who you're going to pay your bills to. Okay. You say to the credit card company, I'm paying you, I gotta pay my mortgage. Mm -hmm. I live here, I got wife and family and teaching okay. and so forth and so on. Okay. How can that affect your mortgage if you go to say appeal a t real estate tax increase? Let's say my taxes are you know, I don't like them, I want to go there and appeal it. Even though they okay. don't like you to do it because you pay your taxes with your mortgage, but I said, Screw you. Okay. I pay the tax, I'm gonna fight the thing. Um, and you go and you, uh, does that credit report affect your real estate taxes or your no. mortgage in any way whatsoever? No. Can no, your no. mortgage come and say, hey, uh, we're going to recast your mortgage because you got bad credit? No. Nothing to do. That's the good news with the mortgage. But your first question is, who do I pay? Naturally, you pay your mortgage. Uh, you don't pay the credit cards. Now, the people with good credit, you can call up your credit card company and negotiate for a lower interest rate. Or say, I want a lower interest rate or I'm going to take another credit card to pay you off. The mortgage is first, your rent is first, your gas, electric, telephone, credit cards are second. If you live in a non-exempt state now, now Jersey, an example, New Jersey, and there's so many states out there that are not, in other words, Pennsylvania that we live in is an exempt state. Exempt means legally. They can't attach your wages. They can't go after you. But if you live in Jersey, Yes, they can attach your wages. Credit card companies can attach your wages because this is what you're signing. There's federal law and there's state law. If you're going and you're taking out credit cards in New Jersey, not Jersey credit cards, but you have credit cards, yes, they can attach wages. So you don't want to just, you have to pick up the phone. You have to negotiate. There's many things you can do. The many things you can do to stop the garnishment of an, if you live in a state. But your mortgage comes first, your rent comes first, and the bill collectors. And bill collectors, again, I'm going to repeat, don't deal with them, don't take them, don't answer their calls. There's so much you have more rights than they do. And, and the Federal Trade Commission has passed more laws. Attorneys are even under the same guideline as the, the bill collectors. Attorneys are also bill collectors, so don't think they have more uh, escrow or more clout because they say, and here's the key that attorneys will say to you, I'm from the office of. He didn't say he was an attorney. He's saying, I'm from the office of. He didn't say he was an attorney. So when you say, here's someone that says, I'm from the office of, you say, are you an attorney? I'm from the office of. Are you an attorney? And if he says no, then saying, well, you know what? Under the Fair Debt Collection Act, do not call me again. I'm going to put this in writing to you and cease all communications. Simple as that. It's that simple. And that's all in... Some of Pearl's books that, that it's you can bail yourself of at 1-800-876-GRID. I'm repeating questions that I go out socially. 
uh, maybe when we have the telephones into the studio yeah. for a little bit easier for people to contact me. But speaking to a gentleman the other night, he said, um, when it comes to credit, he said, ask Pearl. I said, I will. Um, if you're delinquent in child support, mm -hmm. does that affect your credit? Of course. As a matter of fact, not only affects your credit, it's a, it's a double whammy. There's the IRS, there's child support, and there's the student loans. Even if you live in an, an exempt state, right. Pennsylvania, yes, they can go after your wages, even child support. Now, the good news is, when it's on a credit report, and I've seen it on many, many people's credit reports, yes, it can be disputed, yes, it can be removed, even as you're paying it. But on the credit report, does it say delinquent in child support? Yes. Does it say the reason that you're... It okay. says judgment. So that can affect your credit. Course. If you are behind in child support, of course, and okay. it will affect your, and it will affect you, but it, it's it's going to affect you because it's not going to just be on your credit report. People will be contacting you to seize or go after your wages if you, if you're not working. It's still going to be a judgment on your credit report, which other creditors will see it. You do not want every creditor to see this, so this is why you need to come to people like me, or you want to do it yourself, but you need to correct your credit. If you think that you're just sitting back and be stagnant, it's all going to go away, it doesn't go away overnight. It really doesn't, and it's never going to go away. This is why I wrote my first book. In America, is bad credit a prison term? It can be a prison term to you if you do nothing. I mean, this is why they have to... You, I mean, I'm going to repeat again, 1-800-876-CREDIT. 1-800-876-CREDIT, even with your questions. What I'm going to do, because of now to the holidays, we have a serious problem in our country when it comes to the holidays. I do sell my credit lifeline package but I do take on people. If you wish to become my client, my client, all you have to do is call the 1-800-876-CREDIT, mention Irv Homer, you'll get a big discount. You will get a big discount. You have to mention Irv Homer, and then you, I will take you on as a client personally to help you with your credit problems. But if I also sell my book, Six CDs, that's only $49.95. You, you can do it yourself. You can actually do it yourself. Another question, for. When when you make you get a bill from the credit card company, your your monthly statement. Okay. Okay. How do they figure the interest? Twenty eight days, thirty days, twenty one days, fifteen days. You pay in advance. You don't get credit. How the hell do they figure? I mean, what is the formula for that interest for that month? There used to be a formula that it was ten days. There used to be a formula of thirty days. I'm saying it's getting out of hand because the banks are making their own rules now and their own policies. First, you have to pay within 10 days you were late. Then it was within the first 10 days of when you receive of it. Of when you receive it. Okay. First, it used to be 30. Now, if you look on your bill, it'll say, and you're looking on the counter and you're saying, this is only 10 days away. They're, this is what I'm saying is they're trying to hurt people with good credit now because they're forcing you into not paying them. And they're forcing you now, because of the interest rate, oh, we're raising your interest rate, we're decreasing your amount, and we're decreasing the amount of time you have to pay us. Now, who puts this together? Congress. Congress puts this together. This is going to be a scary election, because Delaware is the credit card boss, and Delaware is, I mean, I hate to say it, but many people are that live in Delaware. This is going to be the main thing of elections that people aren't even familiar with and aware of, that they're, all the credit banks are going to Delaware because they can do what they want. It's a free-for-all. We better have somebody in, in office in Washington that understands this. And if they don't understand it, we're in a depression in the next year and with people with good credit. And I want to appear in front of Congress, and I'm trying to appear in front of Congress. I have solutions. I've always had solutions. They don't want to listen for one reason. They'll, they'll listen to me with everything else. I've told Citibank, 25 years ago, how to correct this problem, just put pictures on a, on a credit card so there would be no fraud. Their answer to me was, no, it will cost us billions of dollars. It's costing them billions, billions of dollars, dollars now on the fraud. So where is this country going? We're all going to be in trouble by the time And one of our vice presidential candidates happens to be a Delawarean. People have two homes in, in uh, just my own personal experience. I had a home in Delaware and I had one, one here. And they have a reciprocal agreement between Pennsylvania and the state of Delaware on taxes and on, on debt. Uh, what I did was kept a record of how many miles a year I drove in the state of Delaware, how much money I spent in the state of Delaware as a non-resident, 
Uh, I got a tax benefit on both sides, also automobile insurance, and uh, they have a reciprocal agreement between the two states. On your credit report, it's primary resident only, am I correct? Yes. On your credit? Yes. Okay, now in a state like Delaware that has reciprocal agreements, Okay. Can, you can use either state, I suppose. I don't know. Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting you said no, that. Because I had a credit card in Pennsylvania. Yes. And I had a credit card in the state of you Delaware. You can have two. You can have and two. And in Delaware, I got credits and points and all kind of good stuff as a non-resident. Mm -hmm. Although I did pay a certain amount of taxes because of the fact that I used Delaware Highway. It, it's a hell of a deal, but you have to know how to, you know, what, what your rights are as a non-resident Delawarean and a, a, a non-resident Pennsylvania. You brought up an, an interesting topic. Because I had one idiot taking, taking pictures of my license tag uh, <laughs> when my car's in the driveway. And I said, hey, stupid, come here. I don't want to hurt you. Come on over to my side. See these cars? Yeah. They're titled in Delaware, okay? So this, the credit this, banks, this you brought up a good topic, because the credit banks, they everybody thinks you go, but they go by Social Security. If they don't. They go by addresses. If you moved to Delaware and, and opened up a credit card in Delaware, and then you, you, you were here and opened up a credit card in the Pennsylvania area, you would have two credit cards, even under the same bank, because they're going by the addresses. They're not going by your Social Security. If you moved to Florida tomorrow and put your name, put your new address down, they probably would have no record found because until they transferred everything and understood it. But this is why people are getting credit in different states or have no credit in different states. They do not go by your social security number. They're going by your address, not by the social security. So yes, you can have good credit in Delaware, bad credit here. <laughs> well, that, that's what I said, it, you know, it, it's more complicated and I know many of you folks may be confused, confused but it's so important to read Pearl's books and to be aware that this lady is available for you for information and for your protection and for your family's protection, it's mind-boggling. 1-800-876-CREDIT and the uh, website is pearlpolto.com. Now another thing is, Pearl, that I've discovered over the period of years, and I spoke to you off, off I don't like credit. I don't like to have coupon books that I mail things on. They okay. I went through that in my younger days, and I swore I'm not going to do it anymore. The last boat I bought, I said I wanted to pay cash for it. And the dealer says, I don't want any cash! I said, what do you mean? There's too much paperwork. I said, well, it's all legitimate. I'm not afraid of the IRS. Screw them. I work. I accumulated cash. I want to pay cash for the boat. Mm -hmm. No. We want you to take it through Wilmington Trust. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, three months. Can I finance the boat for three months? People, ladies and gentlemen, are actually being forced into using credit. Yes, yes, they are. They're forced to use the credit because one, now you got to remember now, they're making interest. So is the bank. And every time that he gave it to a bank, Wilmington Trust is making interest off of you. And it's pretty sad for parents. My my parents had to go through the same thing when they bought the first their car as of so many years ago, and they said. You have no credit score. I you, thought I was bringing them AIDS or something. Yes, well, cash. no, they did. Be even my parents went through it where they said, sorry, we can't take your cash. Yeah. We have to three months. But what they're doing is, yes, they're forcing you into credit. Senior citizens, they're forcing you into getting a credit card in order to cash your check now with the direct deposit, thank God. But even now, the country is so lack of credit that they're forcing all these new people, including the children, to get credit. Mm -hmm because they're running out of people. They'd rather have you take it for six months, three months, and they're gaining interest. He gets a part of the, the cake because and of Wilmington fee. and everything, finder's fee and everything else, and the only one that paid for it was you because you had to pay for those three months of finances. Did you want it? No. You were forced into it, but you could have went someplace else to say, hey, no, I'm, I'm, you just lost my business. Then he would probably would have taken it. But it's unbelievable. Pearl Poulter with our guests, ladies and gentlemen. And you can contact Pearl at 1-800-876-CREDIT. 1-800-876-CREDIT. Check out Pearl's website, Pearl Polto. That's P-O-L-T-O dot com. And I can only say that tonight at 8 o'clock, Philadelphia may erupt into all you... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Philadelphia fever. That's why, so, that's why the chat room is like... So I don't... Like to look, I, I, 
I do this because I love Pearl and I get them, I, and I got <laughs> I a lot it. of a lot it. of information. It's exactly. Do we, have, do we have some time? A minute yeah, left. You've got Pearl, of time. read read this note, Pearl, that came from. Where is, it? is that the one from Taiwan? This is from Taiwan. Taiwan. If, ever, if you listen in out there, this is not just our country with credit problems. First, I wish I wish I knew what I learn now. Thank you. I fell on bad times 12 to 13 years ago. Student loans, credit cards, the works. Not a lot of debt, but a lot of small stuff. The bill collectors would harass me at work, called my job, and even called my counselor, psychology that works under a social worker. And this particular collector had this tough guy streaming me. I can't take it anymore. Do something. This guy is able to negotiate with the state to get money for the disabled and deal with drug addicts as well. Oh, did the predictable thing and hide and threw out the letter and left the country. Well, after getting married four or five years ago, I came back, got a credit report, paid all the bills, and they took out a small bank loan and paid it off. This was over six years ago. I probably had zero credit now. Here are my two questions. Is it too late to go back 10 to 12 years to find what the bastards was and screw him? If I had proof and acted on it, I would have definitely been $82,000 richer, like the case that your guest had mentioned. Secondly, in my current country of Taiwan, I still had stolen credit. I have a MasterCard, Visa, American Express. I have an automatic bill, so I never carry a balance. Can I get this information onto my credit report? Yes, you can. All you have to do is write to the credit bureau, put this information on it, case closed. And yes, you wasted $82,000. You watched the show too too long, too too long. All right, one other one other question. I told Pearl, I said, I, and, and I, I, I don't like anybody, especially to my audience. I have never checked my credit report. I, I know. know. What, I don't know what the hell is on it. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't need their, I don't need their damn credit, but I'm going to protest them anyway. But one thing I did find out, and, and Pearl's going to check it for me, um, sometimes, like I do, say, oh, look, I don't use credit, I pay the credit card over, I have one card, and that's it. There could be something on there that may have been laying yes. dormant for 10, 20 years yes. you don't know about that keeps you it. Yes. Relatives, family, anybody using your name and mailing it to their address. You'd be surprised we could come on. And I know this from my own family, my own uncle. Uh, there was a junior, there was a senior, but somebody took his, and I said to him, pull a copy of your credit report. There was something on it, it wasn't even his, but it was getting paid. It was getting paid, he never knew about it. So yes, you should. everybody should check the credit report every six months. Not even a year now, it's every six months. Well, I'm not gonna let you know what she finds. How do you like that, folks, huh? <laughs> Pearl, thank you so You're much. Welcome. Oh, You're welcome, you're welcome. Always a pleasure, when, always when a pleasure. Pearl was here. We've been broadcasting from IrvHormer.com. Once again, my website, tell your friends about it, is www.IrvHormer.com. My email address is evilirv at IrvHormer.com. And this technology has been set up by RGH Computer Services. For all your computer problems, Sometimes they can just work you through the problem by telephone. Their number, 215-322-8685, 215-322-8685. Once again, Pearl Polto's toll-free number is 1-800-876-CRED, and uh, her uh, website is pearlpolto.com. I'm a reformer, and I guess it's, it's appropriate to say, go Phillies. Go Phillies. Go Phillies. Go <laughs> Phillies. Sorry, Shirley. Till the next time. <laughs>